The Cassini mission to the Saturn system has captured the hearts of many people across the world. Not only was it a fantastic feat of engineering, it was ambitious with its mission objectives, it was a completely successful mission, and it took some of the most spectacular images of space that we have ever seen. During its 13 years around Saturn, it sent back an incredible 635 gigabytes of data, from which more than 4,000 science papers have been published. It discovered six new moons. It confirmed that icy moons have subsurface oceans of salty liquid water which may well be habitable. It landed a probe on Titan. It observed Saturn's peculiar storms. And during all this time it traveled in excess of 7 billion kilometers. In my opinion, and probably in the opinion of many of you, it was one of the greatest missions of all time. The final phase of Cassini's mission was named the Grand Finale, where Cassini performed some of the most dangerous maneuvers of its whole mission. Mission controllers sent Cassini into an eccentric, elliptical orbit over the planet's poles and daringly threw gaps in the rings. The last few orbits took it closer to the surface of Saturn than it had ever been before, giving scientists a new view and perspective of Saturn. The first time lapse we will look at is from the 8th of September 2017, only one week before the end of Cassini's mission. One of the main focuses of Cassini during its mission was the moon Enceladus, one of the prime candidates in the solar system to contain life in a subsurface ocean. Cassini discovered over 100 water plumes erupting through the moon's crust from this ocean, water which freezes in the space environment and has now formed the beautiful E-ring around Saturn. This ring is very tenuous, only visible when backlit by the sun, and is potentially the bluest naturally occurring object in the solar system. Here is a great view of Enceladus's effect on the densest part of the E-ring. You can see the plumes disturbing and replenishing the ring. Cassini's final look at Enceladus's plumes were captured in this remarkable time-lapse taken over a 14-hour period. On the 11th of September, Cassini was near the furthest point of its final orbit and captured this beautiful mosaic in natural light. Visible are the thickest of Saturn's rings D, C, B, A, and F, with Saturn's short shadow being cast over them. Saturn's northern hemisphere was experiencing summer during this time, which means that Saturn's famous hexagon storm is visible in all its glory. You can also just about notice Saturn's subtle bands in natural light. What's really interesting about this image, however, is that the night side of Saturn is dimly illuminated. This is due to light reflecting off the rings, meaning Saturn's nights in the hemisphere facing the sun don't get that dark. Below the glow of the rings, Saturn is pitch black. As Cassini began to approach Saturn again on the 12th of September it took images of Saturn's atmosphere near the planet's terminator line. Incredibly because the sun is low in the sky here, huge cloud structures can be seen casting shadows that stretch for many kilometers. You may think this is a close-up of Saturn but actually, we are looking at a scene about 5,500 kilometers across. Saturn's moon Titan could easily fit in this shot. Cassini was getting closer and closer to Saturn. On the 13th of September, it peered one last time at Daphnis, a shepherd moon keeping the A-ring in check. The gravity of Daphnis causes ripples in the ring, and some of you keen observers will notice ripples in front of the moon, as well as behind. This is due to the orbital speeds of the rings in the moon. The inner ring orbits faster than Daphnis, meaning the ripples overtake the moon, exposing more ring material to the moon's gravity. On the other hand, the outer ring travels slower than Daphnis, meaning the ripples lag behind the moon. By the time the ring material reaches Daphnis on either side again, the ripples have already smoothed out. The final image Cassini ever took was looking over the region where it would plunge into the atmosphere. It was nighttime here, and so Saturn is lit up by light reflected off the rings. On the final day, photos were not on the science agenda. As beautiful as they are, they use up a lot of valuable bandwidth, and scientists wanted to get every bit of data real-time before the spacecraft was destroyed. This was a unique opportunity. We had never probed Saturn before this. When Cassini first hit the tenuous parts of Saturn's atmosphere, it was traveling 123,000 kilometers per hour. The remnants of Cassini's fuel were deployed by its thrusters to keep Cassini's antenna aimed at Earth. At this point, Cassini was 1,900 kilometers above Saturn's clouds. A minute later, 
These thrusters were firing at maximum capacity to keep Cassini from spinning out of control. Cassini was directly sampling Saturn's atmosphere, but this atmosphere was also heating Cassini up. Just 10 seconds later the thrusters were overcome, and Cassini began to tumble, cutting off communication with Earth. Cassini's onboard computers at this point would have been trying to figure out what was going wrong. Gyroscopes and star trackers would tell the computer that it is spinning, and it likely would have gone into a safe mode to divert power in an attempt to right itself. A minute or so later the spacecraft would have disintegrated altogether and burned up in Saturn's atmosphere. As data started arriving one and a half hours later on Earth, this final part of the mission was deemed to be a great success. Cassini recorded data from direct analysis of Saturn's atmosphere, its ionosphere dust particles in the atmosphere, from magnetic field measurements, and perhaps more that has yet to be uncovered from the data. And that's the amazing thing about the Cassini mission, it just keeps on giving. Science papers and discoveries are still being made as the data it collected is being analyzed and re-examined. And great news, missions to the Saturn system do not end here. Titan will be getting a lander, named Dragonfly, which will actually be a drone powered by a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, and its mission is to fly around Titan, directly sampling Titan's surface in various locations. So, there we have it, a look at the legacy of Cassini, and of its spectacular final images. Did you know that spacecraft use something known as the Deep Space Network to communicate with mission controllers on Earth? These are giant communication facilities around the world so that no matter the orientation of Earth, spacecraft like Cassini can send back data.